Welcome to Playing With Fire, the podcast for people who are ready to custom build their love. We're talking about non-monogamy, however you design it, as an individuation opportunity. Want to leave the default and make your life spectacularly you? You're in the right place. Well, hello. Hello. So it's funny to say hello to you here. I'm in my house. I've also seen you already all day, and yet, <laughs> hello. Well, hello. Um, hello to everyone who's listening, but specifically, hello to you, whoever you are. We are talking about one of my favorite topics in the entire world, possibly because I resisted this topic so much for so long. We're talking about individuation. I don't know why you resisted it. It is, um, well, it's literally changed my life. So I only recently realized why I resisted it. And that doesn't really help at all. I resisted it because we resist the things we need. Sure. Because we're human. We're human. <laughs> and that's yeah. one of the it things was... humans do sometimes. Exactly. But we're going to talk about specifically individuation in the context of relationships. So hmm, I say relationships are messy and that's good news quite a lot in my life, but individuation in particular requires us to get comfortable with messiness. That's for sure. It just that's, does. That's definitely. Um, or at, I, could, I could reframe that us to acknowledge the fact that um, mess is occurring. And if we're going to be uncomfortable with that, then to be with our discomfort. Right. And I know for me, it has meant acknowledging that I am messy. I am a mess. And if you're going to be in a relationship with me, you're going to be in a relationship with a mess. And I love how we have approached our relationship, which is Hey, well, hey, you're a mess too. Yeah. Tell me more about that. I want to know what's going on in there. The depth of the relationship that, I mean, the depth that you get to see me at because I come to you and say, I'm a mess. There are things I do not like about myself and I'm going to share them with you. It's been amazing. And we're at a spot in our life where I can easily say to you, can I appreciate you as a messy individual? And I'm, I'm here for it. But I'm not able to say that in all my relationships. Um, something I've noticed a lot, especially dating over the last, say, well, maybe 18 months, heading on to two years, whenever we came out of like bubble time. Yeah, right. Um, I've dated a whole bunch and something that's come up over and over again is the, uh, the number of people who right from the get go are like, I don't want any drama. I don't want any mess. I don't want, and I genuinely don't understand what I'm supposed to do with that. Like, so what you're saying is you don't want to know my whole self for sure, but also, um, what are you talking about exactly? You don't, you don't want any drama. You don't want any mess. You don't want any complications. I, I see relationships as an opportunity to be present for my own individuation experience. Right. Relationships are one of the places where I'm going to bump up against myself. I'm going to find out who I am, what I'm made of, what's going on. And I'm going to come up against stuff that over and over and over again proves to me that I don't know what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. And that's one of my favorite parts about not just our relationship, but the friendships I've had that really go to that depth and um, the aspects of other relationships where I'm able to go to that depth. Um, some parts of my parenting get to go to that depth. Some parts of my being a child of parents got to go to that depth. And that's where the that's where the good stuff happens. Yeah. And so why, why do you, why did all these opportunities for depth in all those different places, why did those come up for you? 
Uh-oh. <laughs> um, I, my, oh, you, you asked me such an uncomfortable question. <laughs> Um, okay, you know how uncomfortable I am with the idea that I am special in any way. You are. I literally yeah, want to throw up right I now. I remember there was a book you had in a actuary. You put in a brown paper wrapper. Because I don't like the idea that I am in any way extraordinary or different, right? I definitely have a, a complex around being too much or being, yeah, or thinking too well of myself. But I, I have had to come to terms with the fact that I really, everything I do, I do with depth rather than, than yes, like you do width or breadth. Yep. Um, and if I look back over the course of my life, so that's called looking back teleologically, right? Like if I could be at the end of my life and look back to the beginning, looking at all the patterns, looking at the, the patterns, yeah. the way that my childhood played, like that was present the whole yeah the whole time yep um you knew me as a child and i've known you all that time and it was true i didn't i didn't take up tie-dyeing and like tie-dye a few shirts no i took up tie-dyeing and filled clothesline i remember clothesline those clotheslines clothesline with t-shirts and bandanas and sweatpants and sold them and had other kids had lemonade stands i sold these at my namie's beauty shop and i it's just always whatever I did, I went all in on. Yeah. Um, so I guess to some degree, this is just me being me, yeah, being the most me right. version of me. And that actually is that's the individual that's process. That that's what yeah. Individual that's what I see in you. You're like, and and you when when we got together, when we started to really have a, a deeper relationship than we had had, uh what I found was you invited me to find out what else there was in me, in you, in the stuff around us. And that's uh, for, for me, for my life. That's what I've been looking for the whole time. And uh, sadly, I was a little bit too lazy <laughs> to really pursue it. But then you gave me the motivation and persistence to to do it. And so so this is me as somebody who ra was raised and raised, you know, myself, I made the choices to be a very positivist, scientific, it's all got to be like evidential proof for everything. And you showed me the boundaries that I had put on myself because of that. It was like, hey, what happens when we open them? I mean, I love some good evidence. You know oh, me and I there's nothing, nothing wrong with it. And nothing makes me happier than a logical argument. Oh, you love that. I do. Yeah, absolutely. And there there's stuff that is knowable through more than that. More. more there's there's the word. There's the word for the individuation relationship that we are in. Where, where's the more, where is there more? So interestingly though, I don't think it's always about what people expect. So mm -hmm. it's an individuation relationship. We've committed to being in an, an individuation oriented relationship, which does not mean in our case that we are the only individuation partners that we will have. No. Right. Um, I've had others yep. while we were it's not married. exclusive like that. It's... Nor does it mean that we are focused more on the relationship than we are on ourselves. No. And in fact, it, it no, it's kind of the opposite. Can't. Right. There's yeah. the thing. When we first got together, that was that was one of my big resistances. I was um, when we first became intimately connected, I felt nothing more keenly than the the limits of our situation. Um, I felt the limitations of our time together, of the depth that I was allowed to go to, of the, the things I was allowed to say and about. There were a lot me, of but, limits at the um, beginning. Yeah. The way I was allowed to express my love, yeah. all these things. And so when we, when we broke free of that level of barrier to our relationship, um, I really, I, I just focused, I hyper-focused on all the places where we overlapped, where our 
Venn diagram formed that beautiful little vesica Pisces, that, that little shape in the middle. I focused on that. And I think it's possibly the place I've lost myself the most. Yeah. In Me last, too. You know, decade plus now. The times when I have lost myself the most have been in that, that overlap of, um, let's forced mutuality. Let's be one. Yes. Um, that, that is not, well, since individuation being the goal, the, the search for the most me, me I can be, if I'm being you, <laughs> that's not doing it. Or if you're only being what is acceptable in the overlap, like in, so yeah, right. this, if we were to think about um, just the overlap of our interests, just like right. narrow it to mm -hmm. one facet of ourselves, ourselves, Our, ourselves, ourselves, yeah, ourselves. Um, if we, if we were to say, you have your interests and I have mine. And in the center, we have these shared interests. Um, by the very definition there, we're cutting off huge aspects. All of that ourselves. stuff outside that but little we're, shape. Right. Yeah. But there's the thing. Individuation is about shedding the masks that you put on that didn't actually fit. Not about leaving aside your, your being, your selfhood. So that you can merge with another so completely that, and that's unfortunately because like, it was like a pendulum swinging. We had had yeah, so many right. limitations that we, we accepted for ourselves. Yeah, I created some of them. You did. You, Lots like, of you, them. On purpose, Myself. Yeah. Right. Trying to create our relationship. We stumbled, 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 and we kept putting all these rules in place that were designed to protect, protect your first marriage protect um, our individuality, protect our children, protect, protect, protect. But we didn't really do anything to protect ourselves from over merging, from becoming, nope. becoming this glop of indiscernible Han and Jolie. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. So, and I, I just, Not this good. is kind of an aside to the conversation, but um, my mental picture is there, there's the two of us in these two different spots, separate from each other. Mm -hmm. And what we did was we ran toward each other and passed each other. <laughs> and now we were each kind of being the other one. And it's still like, we thought we were merging, but actually we were both just we actually exchanged. moving away from ourselves yeah. and exchanged all this stuff. And um, that was a time of great dissatisfaction for both of us. Right. So we, th that's the work of um, the golden shadow projection. Yes. Yeah. That, okay. So another depth psychological term, um, a, a sh shadow material is whatever um, you can't bear to know about yourself, right? Like we all have this. It's, you know, if you have somebody who's just driving you bonkers at work, look at it. What, what is it that's driving you bonkers? Like, what is it that just irks you, just grates at you, right? Like eh, it only grates because there's a seed right. of that somewhere in you, but there's also golden shadow, right? The golden shadow material is all the stuff we desperately long to have as part of us. Um, and we often spot that in someone we fall in love with, especially in that time when we're falling, when we experience this sensation of just head over heels, yeah. tumbling into love with someone. Um, I've experienced that a couple times. Well, last summer in particular. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I fell hard <laughs> a couple different times. And when each of those relationships ended, it was really easy for me to see how, yep, golden shadow projection all yeah. over the place. I saw something in them that I wanted to claim and own and know of myself. And it was much easier to see it out there than to look within and own it and say, Oh, yeah. and this is not have that quality. Yeah. I am that. And, and we got caught in that all oh, over the place, all over the, the place. We, we did your that, yeah. the metaphor, the image you just drew up. We ran so we hard ran right past that, each yeah, other. I wound up and yeah, I'm over here now imagining really i wrote my entry <laughs> my entry proposal for my dissertation about like wanting to study rites of passage <laughs> in natural in intact <laughs> communities that is not my work that's the stuff that's, i had been doing your work. Yeah. yeah yeah 
but had moved away from because it wasn't what you were doing. And what I was doing was running a gym that you had asked me to run. Yeah, like we just it just went. It was miss. Yeah. Oops. You sunk my battleship. <laughs> yeah. Um, I sunk my own battleship. Thank you very much. Actually. You did. You did. <laughs> I um one of my favorite, and this isn't really golden shadow, but it feels related to me, is the reason that I have purple hair. Oh my gosh. This I think this is <laughs> hilarious. Same. So for the whole time we had known each other, you had noticed that I was attracted to, to people with colored hair. And yeah, I for like commented a, on it like the all whole, the time. Whole time. And then, and then I wanted then to you, attract you. So I and you dyed your hair. Dyed my hair. And I was I thought it was amazing. It got and the I attention was like, I was looking for. It, it did get you your attention. First purple, then blue. And then spent that I did that yep. for a couple of years. Yeah. And uh and so last year you yeah. you you waited and waited for me to figure it out and finally you said you get to color your hair too well we were going through a period what of time was it, it was something like that so you had commented a few times on me potentially dyeing my hair yep. again and i just didn't care and it's for me it's mostly because i want to see how it turns gray i'm really i'm kind of into it i'm 46 now and i'm kind of into seeing like what happens um i have gray hair but it's not like gray yet like no and yeah. noticeably and i'm curious so i don't i'm just not into it um but the kids went through a phase we would come home and every day every somebody's day. head was a different color we had a tennis ball over there oh and at one point they shaved off their eyebrows and then re-dyed them i it was a whole thing there was a lot going on there was a lot going on and, and it was literally the same person would dye their hair like every week it was wild our color. shower it was pretty cool so many colors oh, it was really the cool. towels to it the towel we lost so many towels to that the incidents of 2020 and 2021 and that was what i was like oh my god surely he'll get it now surely he's gonna notice that he comments every single time and he's so engaged and enraptured by this because and i had lit up. It. there's the sign you would yeah. be lit up from the inside yep. this this smile would rise when we would come downstairs and there's moy and he's standing there with his tennis ball head <laughs> Yep. Out of nowhere, out of just having had long blue hair, and all of a sudden, and your smile would come from your toes yeah. all the way up yeah. and light you up. And I thought, he's going to get it now. <laughs> no, nope, he did but not this is, got it. And this is what the individual individuation relationship can do is I had put that so far outside of the realm of what was acceptable. And I use that word because I can't think of another word. It wasn't in my imagination that I was somebody that would do that. So you appreciated it. I appreciated it. But and it didn't... wasn't that I was like, oh, I could never do that. That sentence couldn't even form in my brain because my imagination didn't include it. My imagination of myself. And there's nothing more real than your imagination of yourself. That's it. That's you want to talk about where we put up our limits. Yeah, where we find the edges of ourselves where we, we can't be ourselves. And you didn't in the limits of your imagination. It's not that you gave me permission. You didn't say you can dye your hair if you want. You said, you know, you can dye your hair too, which is, I mean, it sounds like similar words. But the thing was, it you were just inserting in my imagination, the seed and so it, so I dyed my hair, <laughs> like, oh, it would, it all of a sudden a it was in my time. imagination. It did. I mean, then, then there was the practicalities of it. I had to actually do it and but, pick a color. And but then it was, things, but... there was patience because I, so I had, I planted that seed just to see what would happen. Cause I actually, I love your natural hair color. I had no desire. Right. I didn't have some desire to see it died, but I had heard you talk this way for so long. And it was part of your trying to understand your gender, like trying yep. on yeah. the different ways of, of inhabiting your body as a thing. Um, More imagination extenders. Right. And, but then you had to face other parts of yourself, like the part that doesn't take action on your wants. Yep. And I had to just be patient with the fact that this was your material. This was your thing yeah. and not take any actions, not make a hair appointment for you, not take mm. you to the, the shop to pick yeah. out a color, not start sending you Pinterest boards, just leaving you with it. And that was months. 
There was yep. mo- there were months of time. Yeah. When I say then I dyed my hair, there's a there's a lot of time in there. And that's um, fine for me. The, and so the that was work was waiting. That was my journey. That was right. how I was doing how I was exploring that part of myself very slowly. Um, which is how you tend is how to I do explore. things. G- yeah. It's how you tend to explore. I tend to explore a little bit more rashly, to say the least. Um, I, because I work from a very intuitive, like once I get the hit, I just jump. I'm not actually this bad, but I'm like... It's not bad. Uh, but I'm, it's well, different. this, what I'm about to describe is bad. Who's <laughs> Sheldon and Big Bang Theory putting together the jigsaw puzzle that had the clue in it long after they got the clue he was putting in all the rest of the pieces you do like and i tend to do that i don't think this is bad though in fact i like it though it can be frustrating (laughs) at times so i appreciate the way you will see things through and and i don't in a different way than the way i do um i'm moving in a different cadence And yeah. yeah, it just produces different experiences. And this is what's so exciting and still sometimes a little scary. We are very different people. Who mistakenly thought that they were so much alike. <laughs> yeah. And there was a comfort in those early days of thinking that we were so much alike right. for, for me. And, and that happens to me every time I fall for someone. You and now see the I, similarities now I and... just see the pattern. Now I'm like, oh, look at me seeing all these similarities, all the ways that we overlap. And it's just amazing. And can you imagine we have all this in common? And it doesn't matter what kind of person I'm dating or who I'm dating. If I'm falling, I'm falling in love with me as much <laughs> as anything else. Yeah. And it is a one dimensional part of the relating. It, it lacks it lacks the depth of dissension, disparateness, like yeah. being different. And it takes a lot more, not just to acknowledge that we're different, but to truly appreciate how you're different. Um, that's a, like, that's an everyday ask I make of myself. Yeah. Appreciate that he's different. Um, we just do things differently. And sometimes I don't appreciate it. Sometimes I'm pissed as hell. Yep. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't work for you. I mean, we just had a run in yesterday that I was like, wow, I did a yep. lot of parenting yep. yesterday yeah. of a 55 year old man. Yeah. Um, that was not part of my individuation material. That in fact feels like the work that I have to do to get myself back on my track. I have to set that down and be like, yeah, yeah I see. Yep. I see that you are, I see that you are attempting you're unconsciously, totally unconsciously attempting to put me in this position to parent you. Yeah, because part of my individuation work is to find something else for my child parts to do other than other ways for them to resource other themselves. ways that for them to resource to yourself, to myself, right, to yeah. be willing to show up for myself in a way that means I'm not manipulating you into doing it. Right. And this is, this is why I believe that having an individuation relationship is a choice and it is, it's a commitment to Mm -hmm. yourself Yeah. because I committed to this relationship as individuation material long before you did long before. Oh yeah. Um, I started my Jungian analysis long before I started down this particular psychological path and started to, to think about what it was I was doing. Like, how am I going to grow up? What's what's next for me? What is the next thing that my soul requires of me? And I knew I wanted to be close to you and I was obsessed with you in some ways. And when I started contemplating this idea of individuation, it became pretty clear that one of the things I was going to have to do was figure out how to love you well and be myself who I actually am, even if you are not coming along for this individuation journey. Yeah. In fact, I mean, you can't come along for mine. That that's that that's not how that goes. But I could resist 
like one of my options in that situation is to resist you growing in those directions to say, hey, the relationship we have, we've agreed to do these particular things. And I see your growth is antithetical to that. So please don't do that. Your growth is scaring me. Yeah. 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 Okay. Very real. Um, I watched my own parents do that. I can remember being even, um, oh gosh, I was only about 13 when my mom started taking college classes. And I remember my father squishing that, squishing it and not in an overt way. He didn't say she couldn't, but he was not excited for her. He was not proud of her. Um, it, he did not help her imagine that future for herself. And in fact, it scared him. She was becoming yeah. different. And, and I wouldn't have, I would say this so clearly, except when I became college age, I watched him do the same thing to me. Mm. And then when I went back to college, right as my mother was dying and I went back, I saw him do it to me again. And then when I got my doctorate and I called to tell him, I listened to him do it again. He was terrified that education was this thing that tore us apart somehow. It made us different. And it, it is one of the hardest parts of that relationship for me to, to wrap my brain around that he was proud of me. And he was also terrified. He was simultaneously yeah. proud of me and terrified. And the terror, it, it clamped down his heart mm -hmm. and it kept him from being able to generously relate to me. And I say this like calmly only because I have processed and processed and processed and there's nothing I can do. He's dead. He's gone. I can't fix that, but I can accept that that's the path he was on. And it didn't actually stop me. It didn't actually stop right. me. And I, I recapitulated that childhood pattern. I recapitulated it in my first marriage where there was a lot of holding back of my potential so that I would stay the person I was supposed to stay. Because the person I was supposed to be needed to fit into that vesicle Pisces, needed yeah. to fit in that Venn diagram mm -hmm. overlap where here's who we are. Don't. Don't focus too much on what's in the rest of you. Focus on what fits in here. And only if we both chose to add something, if we both took a part and we added it to the center, we could grow, but it had to add there. And then I thought I was doing something different mm. when I committed a life to a life with you and we were together only a few months before I realized that I was in the same, I had jumped out of the frying pan into the fire yeah. in this way. And that's not your fault. That's me. That's my material. I have been recapitulating this pattern. And then I have done it since I have had friendships and I have had um, dating partnerships uh, where I, I, after they have ended, they've, there's been closure. I'm like, oh, look at me having, damn, done it again. Allowed myself to limit who I am to such a, to what is acceptable within the, that framework. Well, And then I start limiting myself, not just when I'm seeing that person, when I'm with them, but I start limiting my imagination of who right. I am. Yeah. And now instead of my relationship material, being part of my individuation journey, it becomes the inverse. My relationship has to define the parameters of my individuation journey. Well, guess what? Now it's not one. No, it isn't it's a really? journey, yeah. but it's not individuation. It's, not really. Yeah. What? Because it's not going to get you closer to your you. Right. Because you're you're holding pieces back. You're constraining and isolating, and it's and not. That's not going to work. A question of what the right path is. Like there's a correct path. It's a question of what path helps you make the most sense out of your being. This is big stuff. Um, yeah, I, I, when I work with people on this, um, there's there's so there can be so much resistance because it can feel so overwhelming to really it commit to this. Can. And when um, I committed to it first, I remember feeling. I mean, it's. I committed to it to the point where I said, where I finally told you I wanted to be married, which is what a funny thing. Yeah. I committed to 
actually showing you who I was. Yep. And I thought, if you've been listening to this podcast, you know, my story is that I truly believed that you were so anti-marriage that that would be the end of us if I admitted that I actually wanted to get married. And instead, it was the beginning of us becoming who we actually wanted to be together. Right, because that was part of the, um, and we didn't just run towards each other. There's a whole wide world of places to run to away from yourself if you're, you know, in in the world and exposed to people. And so, yeah, uh, we had been talking about marriage and we had been bad mouthing it no, for a we while. We had been not talking about marriage. Well, except in the negative. Except in the negative. It there we go. Yes, exactly. The scapegoat holding all yep. of our hatred of what supposedly traditional relationships were. Yeah. Because we we're doing it's, all the bad stuff. We yeah. were acting it out. And I, More the projection. movement that I made, was to say, yeah, I know that marriage is complicated and it's a social construct that carries with it a bunch of dogmatic stuff that I don't necessarily want to pick up. And I want to get into this tangle with you. Thinking that that would be the end and saying it anyways, I think is the first step I took toward truly believing that I could be in relationship and be myself because I was willing to have the relationship end from your side have you be like yep that's my boundary that's my limit <laughs> um I, and and that's the first time yeah. up till there i had molded myself to fit who i believed you would accept yeah right which and is not to say we, i mean i was a hard ass pain in the butt like i was i was not easy i don't mean i was easy going I don't mean I made things easy on you at all. No. But I had, I kept shape shifting to try to fit this image of who I thought you wanted me to be. Yeah. And, and I had been doing the same thing. And we both ended up in some, the Abilene paradox. You had a group of people and they're talking about where they're going to go. And I don't remember all the details, but um, eventually they all end up going to Abilene. And when each one is like, how did we end up here? N absolutely no one there wanted to go to Abilene, but because they never really talked about it and agreed, they just ended up somewhere random that nobody wanted to be. That's what we were doing at first. Implicit expectation. Implicit Whoa. expectation really sucks. Okay. So, so I think it's really interesting. You said that, yep, so you... And you were like, okay, I, I, I want to be married. And you figured I would say, well, that's it for me because I don't want to be married. Except that because I had so little self-actualization, so I was so not far down the individuation path at all, I was like, well, if you want to be married, we should get married rather than, well, I want to be married too, which was true. When I go back and, and look, yes, I absolutely did. But it's so funny that part of the way I got to the individuation journey was not being very much myself. Yeah, there's the thing. We were moving at a different pace. Oh, very much. And it's not as though individuation is some sort of fixed um, place that you get to. No one's individuated. We're all just individuating at best. But so it's not as though there's, you know, a hundred miles of road to cover. And I was at mile 70 and you were at mile 40. It's not that. You just move at a different pace. Your journey is different. Yeah. And it was going to have different things in it. And I was ready to take a particular step. And and I I needed to, I needed to do something that put me at risk. Yeah, the, and that was a big risk because yeah. because stating that to you threatened not just the end of our relationship, but like uh, we owned a house together, yeah. but I didn't currently have the income to pay for it. It was really complicated. So I we owned a business together. It was incredible. There were a lot of entanglements complex. at that point. So choosing to share that for me was a big step, and choosing to accept was a different kind a different part of your journey a different part yeah. yeah but one of the things that i think came up for me is we at that moment we suspended the question of why do we want to do this 
because we kept bad mouthing marriage um, and and throwing it down the stairs, trying to imagine that that is why we both yeah had un- blaming all all our ills on that earlier relationships, yeah. right? Um, and we would talk about the why, why marriage doesn't work, mm-hmm. why um like why everything. I mean, we just why, why, why it's we an, wind. We wind. It's an interesting intellectual exercise. But it's also a and form we of resistance. Absolutely used it to avoid <laughs> and hide from. So what are we going to do? Yeah. So there's the thing. When I talk to people about relationships, frequently, um, they want to stay in the emotional processing and the why, 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 why do I do this? Why did I do that? And there is value in that. And I will go down the why path, but it is frequent <laughs> that the why questions are simply avoidance of figuring out what to do next. What is actually your authentic felt sense? What do I, what step do I need to take to be the most me version of me possible? And that's still absolutely my first go-to reaction in a complicated situation is to say, why? Now, as time has gone on, that phase lasts shorter and shorter, I think, because I immediately see why doesn't get me anywhere I want to go right now. I need to get to the what. Yeah. So why is valuable. It is. But in the case of... Um, people who do talk about their relationships, I find that why can be a place you might be hiding. So if you've been wanting to shift how you show up, how you, like whether you are on an individuation journey inside your relationship, I would just, I would question yourself, not why are you doing that? But so what do you do next? What What's next? How might I shift what I'm doing from from what I'm doing right now into being individuating what an individuating person in the context of this relationship. And the thing is it's not it's not gonna look one way. No, no. Not everyone. So we stumbled into this, I sooner than you, but within within about a year, year and a half after we were married, um, you were on board. You actually found your own analyst and we were both doing relational. We were both that doing sounds so funny now. Within a year, year and a half of when we got married, it's you funny. decided to participate in the marriage. <laughs> and yeah. that's 100% accurate. I'd been married to somebody for, for over a decade before mm. we did not. So I have some patience for this. You do. Which is weird for me to say. For me to even utter the fact that I have patience, I have grown patience. You have. Who knew? But, but you're right. Um after a while, I started to take the steps to take the actions, do the what that was actually going to make the next things possible. Right. And and it was actually just like the hair. First, you watched me. Oh, yeah, yeah. You watched me yep. start to do things differently. You watched me start to set boundaries with you Yep. around, yeah, I see that you want that. That is, I am not willing to do that. One of the first things was I had been working in our business but not being paid appropriately for it. And I drew a boundary and I said, so I'm done. I'm out. You figure it out. You are the president of this particular corporation. I, in this way, I work for you. Right. I quit. Yep. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? And it was hard because that, like that gym was our family at the time. Yeah. Like they were, they met, mattered to us so much, but I was living, I was, I was living for other people my heart and soul were done with that. I had, I had experienced so much harm in that container. I needed to be done with it. I drew that boundary and I did it with more clarity and, and like this sense of this is me. This is my authentic, truly deeply felt sense of, yep, I'm good. I'm done. I'm out. What are you going to do, Ken? Why I'm going to get confused and be filled with consternation. And then um... what you get to, yeah, I mean that that was part of it. But that news, like if you look back over over the four years we did that together in that yeah. way, are you confused that that was the outcome? Absolutely not. 
but not at the time, now, but at the time, it was because of what I had been paying attention to and not paying attention to and all of that, it didn't make sense to me. Didn't fit in your imagination. It didn't of what fit was in my imagination. Happen. So when I drew that boundary, and I, so much life force, so much of my life force was freed up. I drew that boundary. I just stopped going to the gym. I started working out at home and I left you to um, twist in the wind for the first time yeah. since I had become yep. closely connected to you. So the interesting thing for me now looking back is how much that was, that was all me. You left me to twist in the wind. I was alone in it. A uh, very, very uncomfortable spot for me at the time. Uh, yeah. Probably a pretty uncomfortable place for me now. I'm still, I mean, this individuation thing, it's lifelong. Like you said, nobody I mean, gets individuated. Um, so um, what would you say to someone who says, that sounds like I, um, I like the sound of that. I would like to be more me. Um, and I don't know. I mean, this was kind of your experience. Um, I'm not sure what my partner's going to do. Yeah. Uh, I see this all the time. Um, I think it's one of the reasons why I am so it's, it's why. So we titled this podcast when we just relaunched, we said playing with fire. Mm -hmm. It's not just about the, the fact that we're talking about non-monogamy. It is also playing with fire is a wonderful metaphor for the individuation process. It is. Um, it's not about starting a fire. It's not about um, specifically knowing exactly how it's all going to be. Playing with the fire of your being. Mm -hmm. Do something that sets your soul on fire, right? And I like to talk about individuation in the context of relationships. Um, it is not the Jungian way <laughs> in general. The, the more traditional and even contemporary post-Jungian path is to talk about individuation in the individual. And that makes sense, right? Like it's right there in the word. But I have found that much of my, my individuation path has come in standing in a relationship that no longer fits and being myself kindly, as kindly as I could manage as patiently as I could manage saying, this is me. I welcome you to be you. And that might mean that a relationship needs to transform. It might mean a relationship ends. It might mean that the relationship is now known to be not your individuation container. There are a whole bunch of options. Um, It's still, it's always going to be about choosing and to, to be authentically yourself and worrying a little bit less about whether your partner's along for the ride. I say that with a little bit of pain because I feel incredibly lucky to have you, inc like beyond incredibly lucky to have you. It's, it is absolutely mind blowing to me that we got to yeah. where we yeah. got, where we could simply yeah. um, struggle like this next to each other. Right. Because my God, is it a struggle? I mean, it is. Holy crap. I mean, even just lately, I, I mean, I've been, I've been in it. It's been like my spiritual daily growth and all of that has just been past. right now. It's been. Oh, so heavy. And trying not to fix your stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a huge part of my individuation material is yeah. to not fix your stuff. And I, I, I wrestle with that multiple times a day, every single day. If someone is worried about what's going to happen to their relationship, at the cost of them not being themselves, then I would invite them to step out of the why because you could stay in the why question around that forever. 
Why won't they? Why, why do I need this? Why does thing, why do things have to be this way? Why won't they change? Why, 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 why? Or you could get trapped in the how questions too. How can oh, I yeah. change them? How can I convince yeah. them? How can I make this happen? And I would, I would head back toward the what, what is my next step on my individuation journey right now? And the what question, it, for me, this is about being creative. What are the, what could the many different ways really just starting to sort of blast open some space around what could happen next? Um, might I, what, oh, what could yeah. I do? Could I, could I choose to individuate in this container, knowing that my partner is actually like they're on their journey. Maybe their journey doesn't look like individuation. Maybe it looks like, um, maybe for me, it looks like they're kind of going along with the crowd and they're, they're sort of among the masses more than I am. And maybe my bearing witness to that without judgment, maybe that's part of my path. Uh, maybe patience, patience has been a huge ongoing part of my journey. Every single day. Yeah, I and you, you have absolutely been on a journey with your patients. It is not what it once was. It's not done yet, though, because I feel myself running up against it all mm -hmm. the time. Um, it well, might also be about choosing individuation partners who are not your romantic sexual life partner. Yeah. An individuation friend is a real thing. Um, an individuation counselor, somebody who works yeah. like I do with people. That's also a thing. I've had... I've been really honored to have people in my life who could walk the walk with me. Some of them Jungian trained and some of them not. And some of them just people who I cross paths with who at the right time and place for them to be part of my experience. Like we were having relational stuff happen. And for me, that was all um, what we would call in the alchemical sense, the primal materia. That was the stuff. It entered into my life, my experience, and became how I changed, how I transmuted. And myself. I think you mentioned that by the, 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 uh, the canonical Jungian approach has been an individual individuating. Yes. And your approach to this is, um, is to investigate individuation in a community. Yeah. And I love that so much. I believe in relational um, individuation. I my, believe in it. My um, my training is in science, physics was my most recent degree, and uh, reading Carlo Rovelli, mm. um, modern writer in physics, brilliant man, and he talks about how we can look at the individual particles as, as individual little things with their, with their own existence and their own laws and their own rules. But if you look at them all like that, nothing will ever happen. It's only in the interaction that we can even find out what things are. And that sounds that, that to me, that is exactly what you're saying. And I, it's entirely within my experience because I'm, I've had lots of relationships where everybody just was who they were and that was all there was to it. And we didn't interact with each other. We didn't change for each other. And so we just spent years like that and nobody grew. Okay. First off, a high five for bringing the quantum physics into this conversation. Way to go. Thank you. Um, and I want to balance that with there are lots of people in interpersonal relationships and there is a lot of interpersonal therapy going on that has nothing to do with individuating and is entirely about oh, yeah. um, processing emotions and experiencing things. And it's it, it stays at the personal level. And the difference with relational individuation is it taps into, <laughs> okay, and here's the image. So you have your personal level of consciousness, your being, and you're talking, these are the waves of the ocean. There I am. I am the tippy top wave of, uh, uh, of the ocean. 
and I can see you and I can interact with you. Another tippy top wave of the ocean. And beneath us is our personal unconscious, all the stuff we can't even know about ourselves. And we're trying to understand, but we're never really going to, we can try to pull some of that material forward. And underneath that, we have the collective and the collective unconscious. And under that, we have the magma that is the archetypal layer of consciousness. It's a lot of material it's to so work much with. Material. It's so much to work with. And so, and, and not every wave, not every crest has to be someone who wants to tap deeply down right. into that archetypal layer in order for them to be part of my experience of being on an individuation journey, of being, becoming more me, of knowing what it is that I am that is both wave and undercurrent all at once. Lucky me. Well, I, uh, I, I was just thinking about how we could spend the rest of our lives talking about this because every moment we interact, we learn more things. And um, there are a lot of reasons. So we have decided together that the, the core purpose of our our relationship is individuation yes uh, and that that guides us which means for us that we choose our our individual growth over our collective comfort yes that's our our north star that's mm -hmm. how we aim our our boat but it's not the only way it isn't and you asked me what I would say to someone. Believing in relational individuation doesn't mean that your partner needs to get on board. Um, no, because mean, it's, it's, it really it's, it's still, so we have decided to have an individuation relationship, but even and if I we decided hadn't, it before you did. yeah, right. We were, you weren't in an individuation relationship when you started your individuation journey. No, wait. So we were, we were, but interesting. We were, but we were not in a mutually committed individuation relationship. I was in an individuation relationship. I had committed myself to my path forward, tolerating at first and then growing to appreciate the fact that yours was different. That was okay. my work. It mm -hmm. continues to be because you frustrate the hell out of me. Yes. And, and that doesn't make me better. But that's what I was doing. And while you were doing a different thing, you were you were committed to a different part of life. Different, I mean, to some degree, you were committed to just continuing to build up so, enough ego strength, enough and yeah. not not mm -hmm. ego in any sort of bad way and not being um dismissive, building up the ego strength that it would take to face your shadow. Yeah, well, the ego strength is the thing necessary to say to you this is me. I would like it if you, um, you know, stayed and tolerated me while we figure all this stuff out. But the thing is, I know you're not going to like everything about me. It took me a really long time. Well, earlier today, it seemed like you weren't sure about that. Yeah, I guess it kind of comes and goes. But, but that's a big piece of it's, your work. It's a big piece of my Will work is me mm -hmm. if she knows me. Yeah, still. It's it's part of my work too. It comes out in a different way, but that's true. And this this came out in um in a friendship that I had uh, not that long ago. I I believed that we had committed to a level of getting to know each other that went beyond surface level. And we had, I mean, we had these conversations and we committed to this platonic depth of friendship and then one day she dropped me and that was part of my work too this sucks like I could cry right now it sucked to understand over the now past um, year and a few months almost a year and a half now since yeah. that happened um that that committing to be seen by that particular person was committing to be seen by that particular person who 
is a person who can drop people quickly and completely. That, that's what that is and was. So it is a, there is a risk and that, in standing there. But that's, that experience too has, it's um the Mary Oliver quote, I knew someone once who gave me a box of darkness and it took me years to learn that that was a gift as well. Yeah. Like, right. It's facing shadow material is part of the individuation process, but it is so not the extent of it. If you stop your psychological individuation at the shadow work, know that you stopped at the apprentice piece. Yeah. You're not getting to your master work piece. That's not, yeah. you gotta go further. So, yeah, I mean, just, so just that recently, I was still working on really basic level shadow stuff. I had projected too much of what I wanted to see onto this person and didn't see who she was for real. And so I got a lot of pain back, but the pain itself isn't the problem because that's part of my journey. That's part of my experience. And so now as I process and I work on friendships and continue on, I, that's all incorporated. That's in. all that's incorporated in everything, everything folds in. So wherever you are right now, if you have chosen to commit to yourself that you, you are individuating, this is your commitment to yourself, then, well, for one thing, if you haven't yet, mark it, celebrate that, ritualize it, have a fire. And it's a, it's a moment. It's I worth know. celebrating. It's Do worth something to mark that commitment that you've made to your capital S self. Yeah. And I, I love working with people on the process of really delving into an individuation relationship. But if you're going to go it on your own inside that relational container, well, damn, I'm proud of you. <laughs> Good for you. And if that relationship winds up not fitting, you choose a different thing. Well, I'm proud of you for that too. And I don't know. I don't mean for that to sound condescending. I hope it doesn't. I am proud of individuals, humans in the world, heeding the call of their being whether that be yeah, to stay I to am. go that's not the question the question yeah. is which will help you make sense of your particular mess it's because it's an impressive right. thing to do yeah staying is right leaving is right <laughs> yeah in and yeah wherever you find yourself when you're listening to this Tune into that, that part of you that knows what your next step is. You don't need to know where the destination is. None of us does. When you look back at the end of life, maybe, maybe it'll all make sense. But that's not really my concern. We don't have to know. We can just be no, in the just choice right now, in the decision. Decide what your next step is. Awesome. Well... Okay, I could. I could literally talk about this forever. I don't think we should, though. So thank you thank for, you for listening, listening to us. If this direction that we're taking the podcast is speaking to you, we would love to hear from you. Um, you can reach out to Ken at DoleyHamilton.com if you'd like to email us. Um, if you'd like to hear specifically about an aspect of this, now is the time. Now's the time. We are, we would we are love building hear from season you. seven. Now is the time to ask your questions and get them answered. And please drop some stars, especially on iTunes. It really does help people find us and know that we exist. And I would appreciate it deeply. So if you could rate and review, share with your friends, that would be fantastic. And thank you so much for listening. Thank you.